What would you say to somebody that's watching this, that's going, I want to find my purpose. Like, how do I find my purpose? Hello, my name is Lucy Davis and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today, I am absolutely in awe of the person that has joined me, uh, the beautiful Stella Grace, who I've met through a very, very good friend of mine, Katie Bristow, um, who is linked to Kinda Sound Radio. Ladies and gents, if you don't follow Kinda Sound Radio on social media, please do head over there and you can follow their website on kindasound.org and you will see me on there every two weeks on a Wednesday morning. I'll get Stella to share shortly when she's on there as well. So it will be absolutely amazing. So Stella, you and I met a few weeks ago on a call. Um, obviously I'd seen and I'd heard of you uh, before that through the radio, but we met on a call and it was like two light bulbs just connected, didn't we? So um, thank you so much for sharing some time with me this morning. I really, really, really do appreciate that. So for all of my listeners who are amazing, by the way, um, do you mind giving us a little bit of backstory about you? Because we're going to be talking about finding your sole purpose today. And I feel that your story is so important um, into how you've got connected to your sole purpose. Absolutely. Thank you, Lucy. And thank you for having me. It's great to be with you and great to be here. And yeah, absolutely. We just, our energy went ding, didn't yeah. it? And uh, <laughs> we like, knew we had some conversations. You're going to be friends. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And we knew there was some magic to unfold. So I love that. Um, yeah, thank you. And yeah, I'll tell you a little bit about myself, really. So yes, I am a presenter on Kinda Sound. I have a fortnightly show there. Um, it's currently called The Gifts Within Adversity, but it's having a bit of a, a revamp um, as we grow and evolve, like we all do. And it's going to be called evolve with grace and actually that. what that's yeah it's beautiful isn't it and actually what that sums up is perfectly what we're talking about because it comes from my connection to my sole purpose that quite simply is inspiring the collective to evolve as I evolve and that underpins and kind of is woven through all of the things that I do my my radio shows I'm also writing a book and, and an oracle deck um, I'm a holistic therapist so whether I'm doing a Reiki treatment or training or a tarot reading or an astrology reading throughout it is really my own experiential learning and that comes from a, you know an interesting backstory that I'll come on to in a minute um, but ultimately, as I've learned over the years and through my experiential learning is that I'm here, part of my sole purpose, one of them is to inspire the collective to evolve. So that kind of really underpins all my work in different facets. Um, so my story is um, really I grew up with quite a lot of trauma. I was I was dearly loved. Actually, I'm, I'm very grateful. My mum unconditionally loved me and I remember that and I value that and we're still in connection now she's in spirit and and you know that love was very beautiful so I was very fortunate with that but she was a chronic alcoholic and I grew up with experiencing a lot of trauma a lot of abuse in the home different things not through her but through her incapacity and um you know it, it was very marred by different instances that would go on and my kind of caring role for her and um so you know heavy energy it was a heavy childhood um, and I entered uh, it, you know, ultimately, I, I at 19, I found her dead. She drowned in the bath from a particularly heavy episode of drinking. And um, it was, yeah, I mean, in terms of trauma, it's one of the things I write about. It was a huge trauma, obviously. Mm -hmm. And, you know, to be honest with you, I got drunk for three months and then kind of had this real huge walk in the road. And I, I talk about this because it was such a significant point on my journey where, I had the choice and I was very clearly shown this very definitive choice. Do you want to go the same way or do you want to, you know, choose a different path? And I've, I've um, had lots of um, reflections on that, you know, the energetics behind that, the personality within me. My sole purpose, though, is ultimately the thing that I was meant to move forward from that place and threw myself into my career with young people then, which I did for 15 years. Um, working five years, the initial five were in youth work and then 10 of which specialised in alcohol and drug uh, misuse with teenagers, with young offenders. So always for me, it's been really key to put my experiences to good use. Now, while, 
you and I, um, Lucy, we believe, don't we, that, you know, the soul has a purpose. We chose these lessons and these learnings and these traumas and all of the beautiful experiences uh, combined to grow from. And I really feel that, you know, they um, can really support us on finding our highest potential. So looking back over, it's been, whilst my human wouldn't want to go through those things again, I believe they were perfect for me to grow and evolve from as will I always be you know it's lifelong um so always growing and evolving from those things but looking back whilst I my, my human might not choose to kind of go through them again um I can see so many gifts that I've gained from those things so you know deep resilience a sense of humor you know not sweating the small stuff those kind of real day-to-day -day tools have been you know really shaping for me so that's one thing um but in my book that I'm writing I talk about my story um the book is set in the uh you know foundational context of my story of that of those traumas and then how I've kind of moved on and the tools that I use every day to to keep growing to keep evolving and the accompanying oracle deck that uh you know hits of wisdom and inspiration beautiful so in a nutshell that's my book and um, that's my story yeah that's amazing. And do you know what I love so much is that there are, I mean, your story is inspirational, just so that you know, from my from my perspective, listening to you, it is so Absolutely. inspiring to hear that you've taken such a treacherous situation and you found the gold. That's that's the language I use with, with the people that yeah. follow me. It's about finding the gold. It's like digging yeah. and digging and digging, and you're in you're in hell essentially. Like you've lost your mum, she's mm -hmm. your safeguarder, she's your best mm -hmm. friend, whether we know that or not, most of our lives. Mm -hmm. You know, our mum is our best friend, whatever, warts and all, you know, they yeah. it, it, it's it's just part of being born to that person. And, you know. For you to sit there and say that you had three months of boozing and then you make the decision like I know people that lost their parents 20 years ago and they're still living in the trauma of that. So for me, I, I like I take my hat off to you. It is so inspirational to hear that a young woman, because that's what you were at 19, mm -hmm. can have such a treacherous thing take place. And yeah, you let your hair down and you self-sabotaged for a bit. But then you were like, mm -hmm. you know what? No, this isn't serving me. Mm -hmm. That is wisdom beyond your years at that time right yeah yeah it's fascinating I'm not going to say from that point you know I didn't mess up I didn't have crazy weekends I, to be honest alcohol was still hazardous but it wasn't to the point that you know I, I still worked full-time I, I held my career and my career was you know um really healing for me actually and um just you know supportive actually to have that purpose and again I was linking into my sole purpose supporting other people inspiring them to grow so it was all perfect. But yeah, not all easy, as you can imagine. You know, there were there were still times, there were still pitfalls, there was still sabotage and there were still all these things and this cyclical growth that we're, we're talking about really overall. Yeah. Um, but ultimately, it's always been evolving. So, yeah, I uh, thank that. you, because, yeah, it always has been evolving. And the wisdom before the years thing really hit me recently, actually, because it wasn't something I considered. I didn't look through. Why would you? you know, no, you don't go through, I think I'm really wise beyond my ears, you know, I wasn't thinking like that. But recently it really hit me because um, I have an old box of photos. I, I And now and again, I get the photos out of mum, like you say, best oh. friend. Sometimes I miss her dearly, of course. Um, and, you know, the photos can, can do one of two things. The deterioration process I see sometimes is quite sad. You know, you look at the photos, the alcoholism is you know, uh, horrendously deteriorating for, that's hard to see for people who are around. So there's that, but but there's some really beautiful photos of her as well. And she was, you know, young and beautiful and in her light. And you can really see that. And um, I found a card that I'd written. So when, as I mentioned with the story, you know, my sort of background story, I'd done it almost a lot of emotional caring for her, actually, sometimes physical. You know, I'd be the one going around the pubs to find the keys or trying to get us in and she was locked out or whatever the scenario was trying to um, put out a, a sofa that was on fire or you know horrendous stuff as a child yeah. um, and when I was 16 following school and this was where the wisdom before the years started coming in <clears throat> or was apparent um, I went traveling as soon as I finished school um, wow. with a partner at the time for seven and a half months actually around New Zealand and Bali and it was just the most incredible experience that I couldn't wait to go and do it's like I needed to see the world I was shocked by different cultures I was shocked to my core about the fact that you know hitting Bali you see a McDonald's there and then 
you know, this barren street where someone doesn't even have a pot, you know, you get, you hear that someone doesn't have a pot to piss and you actually know what that means in real, real time. So, you know, did the whole, um, just culture shock, but amazing experiences thing. Anyway, so I, when I was going, because I was quite concerned about leaving my mum for, for that time, I'd written her a card and in this card, I found it the other day and I'd forgotten all about it. And I'd written all of this wisdom, you know, this card was full and I'd written, you know, um, you're strong, you're light, you know, all of it. And I was looking at it, like, it sounds like I, if I would speak now, yeah. the wisdom in it, and that was age 16 years old. So yeah, you know, my point being, I think we really have our soul purpose and our soul shines through our life in whatever states, you know, we're in. Um, it's just fascinating to look back, isn't it? And see those those processes. Absolutely. And what I love about it is you've you've spoken about the way that you've written your book. And it actually sounds very, very similar to the way that I've written my book, because I was very destructive, but not in the way that you were like my granddad passed, who was like my father, I wasn't speaking to my dad at the time for about seven years, I didn't speak to him. And during that period of time, my granddad passed and he what he had stepped into the father role. And I went on one, like, literally, I went on one. And as I was writing the book, you know, I kept coming back, like you said, cyclical. I kept coming back and it's like, oh, I've done it again. And I've just got off on one again. And, you know, I've partied and I bit self-destruct mode. And But yeah. you know what I love about it is it is so healing the process. Mm -hmm. And this is why I encourage everybody to write books. Even if you're never going to mm -hmm. publish it, even if it's never going to go anywhere, just like journal or write a book because you will heal so much by this process. And have you found that? Have you found like going back and looking at things with the, with, with the wisdom that we've got at our age now, have you found that beneficial for you? Oh, absolutely. And magical, you know, like the book writing process in itself, I'm finding really magical at the moment, like how it downloads in flurries. But each time is absolutely healing. Yeah, for sure. You know, and there's some catharsis in there as well. You know, there's they say, don't they? I don't know if you, you heard this, but um, someone said to me, the book writing journey is a journey, a hero's journey because you've got the dark night of the soul, you've got it's not coming through, you've got when will it come through, and then you've got the magic and the flurries of it downloading, and it's like, okay, and all of that being so, again, you know, because it's you're looking at your story and you're looking at what you're bringing to the collective, because this is something I also talk about in the book, I talk about um, healing in five uh, on five levels really so physically mentally emotionally spiritually and collectively and how trauma and different events kind of impact on each of those levels and then the tools on each of those levels and some information through from really from my guides and things as well on the collective level um so looking at you know when you're looking at all that in hindsight and writing it you're you know evolving it's a mirror isn't it you're evolving as well and it's just really phenomenal and I just feel really grateful yeah. to be you know, doing this work and having these conversations with you you know this, what a fantastic time to to be alive and to be growing and yeah Absolutely. I find it fascinating and like I said I think before we came on um you know we are creating a new earth library right now like everybody needs to be helping each other and it is you know I say the word need I don't mean it from a needy perspective I just mean mm -hmm. let's take action you know we don't yeah. want the you know all of the the nonsense that isn't isn't what we know to be the truth now we want to get rid of all of like the imagination stuff like let's create reality like let's bring yeah. in and that to me is why I am so passionate about helping people get messages out you know I feel you and I are, are two very very lucky people I don't know if you mm. you um, agree with yeah. that but you know I I was shown back in 2013 that my my purpose was to take the human race from the head to the heart I love that you know, and here you are, you're inspiring people to evolve through your own evolution. Like, how mm. cool is that? Now, yeah. what would you say to somebody that's watching this, that's going, I want to find my purpose. Like, how do I find my purpose? Because there's a lot of those people out there at the moment. Yeah. And I'm not being derogatory when I call them those people. It's just, mm -hmm. it seems to be a real desperation thread now of people yeah. being like, right you know what is my purpose tell me what my purpose is because I've got a, a a pretty like brutal line that I say to people when they come like knocking on my door for that question so what would you say um from that perspective if somebody is like desperately looking for their sole purpose 
Yeah, hundred percent. And just to say as well, I completely empathise with those people yes, because so. how <laughs> being there. <laughs> because you know that thing. Am I doing my purpose? Am I doing enough? Is it? You know what is it? And all and that can be a real pitfall, can't it? You yeah. know, when you're really getting it's caught so up in that mental energy. Yeah, it's really frustrating, and you you've got so much. You know, you want to give from the heart, and and so for me, and this was actually something else that's been not only a cyclical process of growth, but also that's. But you know how when you're in your flow and you're you're doing the work and things become quite synchronous so you get different messages from different places so it was really dropping in lately um that you know it's all through our being of ourselves and our authenticity and again it can sound a bit vague and a bit fluffy we'll just be yourself but what I mean by that is you know the things that light you up the things that bring you joy following that just next step even you don't know where it necessarily is going into a big planned, you know, route of action. It literally can sometimes be that next step of what is bringing you joy. And this this has been um, kind of highlighted by the different books I read and the different videos I might listen to. Yourself being one of them, you know, as I mentioned to you, you recently really inspired me by how solidly you show up in your authenticity with with ease and flow as well. Again, you know, it's, there's nothing try hard about it. It's you're just in your vibe and that really shows and I think there's some actually really fascinating strong women in their power and I'm not disregarding the men because I believe firmly that divine masculine and divine feminine are rising together we rise I really feel that but you see these absolute badass women at the moment just really in their power really shining and I read um, The Goddess Path recently by Kirsty Gallagher and she talks about you know purpose our purpose being ourselves like it is that simple you know it is that and and it can be really annoying as well because it's like what do I do you know how do I find myself what what, you know who am I (laughs) but it's who you are in that moment it's you know who we are each day that's our purpose to be here being in our light, being authentic, following what lights us up. And then we get the nudges. I don't know if that's how it was for you, but that's how it was for me. The more I'm in comfortable in my own space, yeah. like looking after myself, you know, showing up to what's just giving me the next um, calling, which can, like I say, could be something small. Then it, it just feels like it just goes from there. It just really flows from there. Yeah. I love because what you said. I, yeah. I love what you've said because people think that I talk shit. People literally go, but it can't be that simple, Lucy. I'm like, love yourself, yeah. love others, Ooh. know who you are, and voila, yeah. your purpose will just appear yeah. to you. Like, you know, like everybody's waiting for Jesus to appear, your purpose appears in that way. It's not, it's just little whispers. But for yeah. me, it is love you. Yeah, if you 100%. can't love you, you don't know who you are. Mm. You know, and and I'm asking people all the time, okay, who are you? Oh, well, I'm a mum and I'm a daughter and I'm a this. And then, 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 who are you? Yeah. And then what you mean? And there lies the problem. Yeah. Because it's not exactly like you just said, it's not until we know who we are that we can love ourselves wholly. Mm. And then by default, we start to start to love others wholly. And then by default, yeah. because we're serving others with our love and we're serving ourselves with our love, all of a sudden, boom, we get this beautiful consciousness shift mm. and we're stepping into the reality of who we are. Mm. And that is your purpose. You know, yeah. I, think I, I think I said it offline, but, you know, authenticity to me is is the only way. Like it's it's the thing that I, I breed through my programs. I breed it through my book. I You know, it's just what I breed generally. And I'd rather somebody be an authentic asshole yeah (laughs) then somebody who puts on a mask and pretends that they're something like just be Mm. straight just be straight with me you know because I can never judge you when you are straight with me you know like I I I openly admit um that you know my area of development is relationships like I've I've done the healing like the physical the spiritual I've done all of that stuff but it's just this intimate relationship thing that I'm really working on now um, I spent 10 years working on the other stuff. And now I'm like, okay, cool. This is the only thing that I've been avoiding that whole time. So here we go. And the journey is amazing. You know, I love it so much because I never knew that I was a runner. But wow. in the last yeah. two years, looking back as I've been going through this journey, I'm like, wow, I am a runner. And even mm. now, I would rather just be like, oh, no, cut it sometimes not always but sometimes 
rather than the potentiality of my heart getting hurt. And that's me. You know, I, I coach thousands of people around the world. I mentor thousands of people and that's me. But this is why I say, look, this is my shortcoming. I'm working through it. I'm getting better at it. Please know that I'm getting better at it. But before I was brutal in that sense. And I feel this is how we help each other evolve. Because the other um, elements of the relationship that cycle that I didn't used to be very good at, I'm now better at them. It's just this bit. So what an amazing evolution to share with people. And like you say, you share your evolution so other people can evolve at the same time. And there are people that will resonate with you and there are people that don't. And that's okay. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's it's such a powerful journey, (laughs) right? It doesn't matter. You know, some people have been in such lack with finance this Mm. lifetime. So now Mm. if they can turn that around, then they can inspire people. Well, I, I, Mm -hmm. and I actually saw a book, um, on Instagram, it was a video, but it was a, a of a book. Um, just before we came on here, I should have known we were going to be speaking about books. And this guy was basically saying, you know, I was a heroin on the a heroin addict on the streets for so many years, and now I'm a multimillionaire. And I'm like, this is a freaking inspiring, inspiring story. Like, I yeah. literally need to talk to this man. Um, you know, my sister was a heroin addict, so I, I, when when you were talking about addictions earlier, like it's it really hit my heart. So I get that completely. Mm-hmm. But literally, I've seen this person and. How amazing is it Mm. that we can go from these, you know, depths of despair? Like you say, you lost your mum at 19. Like, Mm. how do you ever pick yourself up from that? And here you are inspiring people. It's, it's so, it's so amazing. Mm. Yeah. Thank you. It is, it it is, like you say, it's such a journey, isn't it? And um, like you though, I, I love that of how you, um, talk to your clients about being on the journey as well it's, it's one thing I say to people if they're on you know a regular training course and we're spending time together or even you know in readings or whatever that I'm on the journey with you like you know we're we're on the journey together because I think that's about the authenticity as well isn't it really showing up with the warts and all with the challenges with that I'm certainly not here you know enlightenment for want of a better word is going to be lifelong it's you know not a state (laughs) exactly yeah otherwise we wouldn't be growing would we you know the comfort zone and there's no sort of um stagnant point so um yeah I I really resonate with it and um it's it's not always easy to kind of you know be I'm finding it I'm getting there you know I'm really getting there now and I'm enjoying it It being just able and feeling more confident and solid to just say this is it you know and and it's taken me a long time to be comfortable with the fact that not everyone's going to like me like that was a big I remember that learning and being like wow that's a game changer not everyone I'm not going to be everyone's cup of tea and that's okay and you know not everyone's going to be mine and I think as a recovering people pleaser you know it's quite interesting these these kind of facets but there was one other thing I was thinking going back to what we were saying about purpose and um you know for people who might be looking for their sole purpose and we're sort of saying you know it's within yourself but it's also for me personally I find that also those nudges and those callings and those like that next stepping stone we were talking about have been more visible through when I have um basically it's still finding yourself because showing up with scheduled time for myself so not having to be like routine necessarily but I was always leaving myself till the last you know last thing of the day or last minute or last on the list in whatever way and that was quite a game changer for me I think really connecting with my purpose connecting with myself because I can only start to do that from a place of stillness or from a place of priority and so for me self-care has been like a really big feature of this kind of um, connection with purpose and connection with meaning in my work because I couldn't have found that place without the the stillness and the clarity of you know that time with myself it's, it's time isn't it to get it to is. know yourself we talk about relationships as well and that's starting with us yeah absolutely it's what's what's fascinating it so I use the word self-love and um, one of my brands mm. is called self-love club because that's all I did I learned Mm. how to love me and that was through recognizing that I didn't have my stuff together like I thought I did you know I thought it was everybody else's fault and actually Mm. when I stopped and I gave myself the time like you say from self-care actually it was me I was creating Mm. it all now that sounds weird 
to anybody normal but if you're on the journey you know exactly what we're talking about and then you know you look at food you look at exercise you look at meditation you look at you know um, your environment you look at your career you look at all of these different things because you have Mm -hmm. to at some point look at yourself and say what is it that's making me sick what is it that's making me Mm -hmm. unhappy so I love the fact that you've touched on that point because self-care people often say to me ah oh no I can do it in those stolen moments no take time for you every single day whether that's exercise whether that's going to the beach whether that's sitting still you know you don't even have to go anywhere you can literally sit down in stillness and silence for 10 minutes and get gold it's a difficult 10 minutes is a bloody long time when you're in silence isn't it and you can't look at your phone and you can't have music and you can't look at a book and you're like oh okay you know, but this is where the gold takes place. And I do feel as you become more comfortable with yourself and as you learn to love yourself more and care for yourself more, mm. that's when those little callings become a lot louder. Like I feel like they scream in my ear these days. I don't need mm. to hear the whispers because they're literally screaming at me, go there, do this, do that. But that's only because for the last 11 years, I've made sure that I've limited the self-sabotage. I'm not saying that it doesn't happen from time to time because it does. I'd be a liar if I said that it doesn't. But Mm. it's always, I know I'm going to do this. So this is what I'm going to do the following day or whatever, you know, to make Mm. sure that I make up for it. But, you know, it's it's important that we enjoy the human experience. And I do feel Mm. that a lot of the spiritual journey, I don't really like that word, but you know know what I mean? The spiritual journey is very much about, you know, we make it so serious. Mm, because we yeah. want to get our purpose because we want to know what nirvana feels like because we want enlightenment you know actually we become very serious and and a key criteria to self-care and self-love is laughter mm, Joy is yeah fun. yeah i absolutely love that and how do we you know how do we carve out those moments so if somebody's listening now and they're like right okay, I get the memo, I've got to work on myself. So I'm going to go and do some work on myself. I'm going to invest a bit more time. How would you suggest somebody carves out some time in their day um, to find those moments where they can Mm. get some sort of message or get some sort of insights into themselves? Yeah, so for me, what's been a game changer is even five minutes upon waking and five minutes before going to sleep as a minimum. So if nothing else, that is my minimum. And that is where I will either do a meditation. It might be guided or it might just be stillness or I'll journal um, or I'll play something inspirational that I'm calling in uh, that I might have voice recorded. Um, So just those because I think there's something quite powerful about that before bed and upon waking. So just to kind of set your trajectory, really. Um, But otherwise, um, it doesn't have to look like a big fancy spa. Thing, you know like oh, great if you can do that once in a while what a lovely treat but I it's I'd love to. Have to. <laughs> yeah exactly I, I don't do loads of that would love to do more just putting that out there but um yeah it can be you know, it could be a 20 minute sauna that's something else I've started doing lately that I love you know if I if I can't do the whole thing I'll just do like one sauna um or go for a walk or a sea swim again they're, they're, so they're quite quick things for me that sound it might sound like a big mission I'm very fortunate to live very close to the sea so that is one of my places of sanctuary but otherwise it could be 20 minutes on the sofa reading a book like that to me feels so luxurious sometimes um and I really love what you said about you know because I really resonate with it and I've seen that in myself the seriousness of the the spiritual path because you it comes from that place of good intentions you want to get somewhere you want to make your life meaningful you want to help others you want to come it's coming from a place of love but before you know it you're kind of beating yourself over the back with a whip or something aren't you and it it can get kind of quite full-on so yeah I found that slowing down pace lately has been really nice and again it doesn't have it doesn't always look like long periods of time but it's just this okay I'm going to take that 20 minutes to maybe not do anything and that's actually you know part of my Mm self-care so yeah it's that shift I think from doing to being is quite nice I love that I love that so much now I actually channeled the full moon energies a couple of days ago um, for whenever it is, in a a week or whenever it is. And um, one of the key things that I just want to, I think this is really valuable for what we're talking about. One of the key things that came through to me was, yes, carve out moments of self-care. Yes, invest in self-love, but do not be routine about it. Do not, Mm. it has to be at this time and it has to be at that time because actually we're releasing our control. We're releasing like the victimhood. We're releasing 
the punishment that we've given ourselves um, mm-hmm. over the last however many lifetimes that we've been incarnated for. So um, just create pockets would be my recommendation. It doesn't like I love what you said about more um, as you go to bed and when you wake up because you're already there. Like mm-hmm. You're already yeah. there. Just take five minutes. And that's something that I would suggest everybody does as well. But just see what you can do. Maybe one day it's lunchtime, maybe one time it's in the evening, maybe one day it's at one o'clock and one day it's at eight o'clock. Like, don't beat yourself up about it, but just set yourself. And what I would do is set a a reminder in my phone. Just be Mm. like, right, 10 minutes, 10 minutes, carve out 10 minutes of your day because we are busy being busy most of the time, aren't we? (laughs) Let's be real. Children, life, work. I mean, the roads are so busy. I've never <laughs> known the roads so busy as they are in England. Like, honestly, I, I you can drive 10 minutes and it takes an hour over there. It's very, very weird. But, you know, yeah. it's those moments that we get so caught up. Well, I have to leave early because otherwise I'm going to get caught up in the traffic when actually you could take those 10 minutes in the car or whatever to just listen to something really beautiful and peaceful. Or you could do some breath work in the car as you're going and you know obviously don't go into meditation as you're driving please ladies and gents but you know it's you know you can go into a meditative state and still be very conscious of what's going Mm. on so as much as I don't really like to suggest people multitask I do feel when we're doing something that perhaps stresses the body out very slightly doing something like breath work or doing gratitudes with your kids in the car on the way to school in the morning or something like that is a game changer and actually will help your self-care as well Mm. I so um Stella what are you do you do astrology you do Reiki you do readings and stuff like that let me like share with me how people can obviously get in touch with you um obviously the book's being written but it's not done yet so we'll have to we'll have to get you back on when the book is written but obviously you're on Kinder Sound Radio when is your show so evolve with grace well it's still called the gifts within adversity at the moment and we have another one airing of the gifts within adversity on the 26th of april following there it's fortnightly on fridays it will be evolve with grace um and i'll be working with some young people which is really exciting um yeah thank you otherwise it's um stella grace holistics on facebook and um stella grace holistics also um on instagram i'm just um getting up and running a YouTube channel that will be called Evolve with Grace. So imminently look out for that one. Amazing. That is absolutely incredible. So ladies and gents, if Stella has spoken to your soul today, please, please, please do go follow her on social media channels. I'm going to put the links below in the description field for convenience. Hopefully, (laughs) you know what it's like. Sometimes clickable links that go non-clickable, but at least you can copy and paste them. And and if there is anything else that you would like to hear from us, do remember that you can drop me an email at support at lucydavis.com and one of my gorgeous team will pick that up and come back to you. Thank you so much for being here today. It's been so beautiful to sit and have a conversation with you. And I would like to get you back on at some point, maybe around one of the energetic periods, like Mm. a full moon or a new moon or something. And we can talk astrology and energetics together because I think that would be really cool. I'd really love that because I can feel like a well of stuff wanting to come out about your download from the full moon and my thoughts about the full moon. So yeah, that would be a really interesting show. But thank you so much for having me today. It's been an absolute pleasure to talk to you. I've loved the energy. Thank you. You're so welcome. Honestly, likewise, likewise. And um, ladies and gents, do please remember to like the video if you've enjoyed the content, share it with all of your friends and hit subscribe to the channel if you would like to see more interviews like this. We will see you in the next video. Stella, thank you so much for being here, babe. Thank you, guys.